we're going to use this moment in time to actually uh, get better at what we do, to be more useful to our customers, and to be more present in our market, to be more innovative. We're actually going to use this moment to demonstrate our leadership. Welcome to a CEO Insights edition of Total Picture Media. I'm Peter Clayton, and I'm excited to have back on Total Picture the founder and CEO of Smart Recruiters, Jerome Turnick. I first met Jerome in 2017 in San Francisco at Unleash, and at the time, the company had about 200 employees. Fast forward to an August 2020 press release with the opening paragraph, Smart Recruiters is proud to announce it posted its best first half results in company history in the middle of a pandemic. While market competitors reduced workforces and scaled back operations, smart recruiters doubled down on uniting customers, pivoting R&D efforts, and spearheading innovations for remote work. This investment yielded positive results. Over 200 enterprises joined the smart recruiters family. You know, first of all, congratulations and um, thank you. Welcome, Jerome. It's really good to see you. And uh, I, you know, it's just it's so nice to have a posi- a, a positive story to tell. And we have a really not only a positive story to tell, but a story that is going out into some areas that you know corporate America just has not really embraced. So I'm I'm really excited about this interview. Um, but you know, first I'd, I'd like to go back to March or April of this year. What what was going through your head? Uh, you know, and how were you able to pivot your company so so successfully? Back in March, um, when the shelter in place came, um, I think I, I saw a movie that maybe I was fortunate or unfortunate to see before, to have seen before in 2001, in 2008, uh, which is when something massive hits the economy, the dynamics of the recruiting market change mm-hmm. very quickly, right? Like literally overnight. All jobs are on hold. Um, so you get to a job freeze or hiring freeze. Um, you quickly get to furloughed uh, uh, recruiting teams. Uh, and then internal redeployment, internal, uh, external deployment, like layoffs, um, and the volume of applicants kind of triples, quadruples uh, overnight because there are suddenly so many people on the employment market. Right. And uh, to a certain extent, that can be uh, scary uh, for you know people who uh, work in recruiting, but at the same time, kind of makes us even more needed. Right, uh, we're here to match people to jobs at scale, uh, and I guess you know our work became just more important uh, through this because hundreds of millions of people have lost their job. Um, so we decided to really recenter on on our purpose, on ourselves, and and be a a force, a positive force um, of change uh, in the market for our customers, for our community, um, for our employees, of course. In some ways, the pandemic is something like a, an earthquake. You, you, you wake up and overnight, everything has changed, right? Um, so Smart Recruiters has employees across the globe. Were you able to communicate a consistent message? And if so, how, how did you do it? And um, you know, how were you able to coalesce everyone around your vision? So yes, we we had a very clear message um, to uh, the Smartians, and our message was simple. Uh, it was we're not going to weather the storm. We're going to thrive in that period. Like we're going to use this moment in time to actually uh, get better at what we do, to be more useful to our customers, and to be more present in our market, to be more innovative. We're actually going to use this moment to demonstrate our leadership in the market. And it's no coincidence that, you know, IDC recently released their global talent acquisition suite, Marketscape, and 
uh, uh, put us at the top right corner as the, the market leader um, because we really acted as a leader uh, in that market. And so we, we unified everybody. Now, the flip, not the flip side, but the important part of that was we need to perform. And so I literally sat in front of all the smart chains, uh, which is how we call us the employees of smart recruiters. Right. Uh, and I said, all right, let's be very clear here. One, I'm not going to fire anybody, no furloughs, no day off, nobody. But these are the numbers we need to achieve, right? And at that time, my board was obviously asking for like, hey, maybe 10, 20, 30% reduction in force would make sense, preserve some cash, be stronger on the exit, right? We were watching all of the other recruiting technology vendor let go 20, 30, 40% of their teams, right? Right. And we stood firm and we achieved the numbers, right? And we actually, uh, uh, all the way uh, back in June, we started hiring again uh, and uh, without, without having done any furloughs or layoffs. That is truly remarkable. Congratulations. So, so what have you learned about leading when virtually everyone is working virtually and how are you able to keep employees motivated and engaged? I think, you know, certainly part of it is when you come out and say, I'm not going to furlough anybody. I'm not going to lay off anybody. Everybody has a job here. But um, how do you, you know, how do, have you had to change your leadership style to deal with a virtual not just a virtual uh, talent pool and employee base, but a global virtual talent mm -hmm. pool and employee mm -hmm. base. I mean, um, clearly staying connected um, when we're uh, separated and isolated um, is the main challenge uh, that everyone's facing personally and professionally. Um, we did a few things there. Um, what what worked the best is uh, lead with empathy. Um, so we heavily promoted uh, smiling, positive attitude, thankfulness, great gratitude. We sent gifts to people. We took care of them. Like we went really the extra mile to identify who was struggling. Uh, and to, to uh, really help them. And I remember at the at the, the heart of it, we, we did an employee survey and we had a, a ENPS, an employee net promoter score of positive 44, which is like app on levels, right? right. Where people are like, oh yeah, I love working for smart recruiters and on scale of one to 10. But then I actually, we looked at the survey and I said, look at, look at the people that are at the bottom of this that are saying, no, I, I, I'm not productive. I don't know what we're doing. And there were, it was very interesting that the surveys were very polarized. People loved it and trusted the company or were completely lost and were struggling heavily. And so we looked after each of these individuals like one after another, and we ensured that we did whatever we could for their working environment, adjusting their hours, sending additional equipment, like making the life of, of our employees better. Um, and I think this is important. It's a time for leaders to lead with empathy um, and, and to be grateful to each other. Like if you don't have the social connection, um, organized gratefulness is, is important. We, we now do at our town hall every month, we do a gratefulness exercise. We take five minutes, we just log all together. We log what are we thankful for in, in, in work. And now you have a wall of, uh, of thankfulness message. What have you learned about staying connected and engaged with your customers? Yeah. Um, empathy also there plays a big role, um, especially uh, our customers, our recruiters, recruiting teams, HIS teams, many of which have been furloughed. Um, and I think here it was important for us to also uh, lean in and help. So we did, we organized uh, user groups, regional discussion groups um, with all of our, all of our users. And they've been extremely popular so they can talk to each other within cities, within region, within industries. Like we've had dozens and dozens of them around the countries. Second, uh, we made our certification course uh, free and we organize regular certifications. So if you are follow, use this time to upskill yourself and here's a free certification 
we certified, I think, like 500 people in, in like smart recruiters admin, which is normally a two day, $2,000 course, right? Uh, and then uh, we released the hiring success masterclass, which is like uh, we're now at eight, eight courses, gives you a certification, SHRM credits, and so on, that we also uh, uh, released and made available for free. And we really helped people, like, okay, well, now is the time to upskill. Uh, and then last but not least, we also uh, uh, encourage the pay it forward. Um, so we, for example, we help launch a platform called Recruiting Recruiters, Rec uh, Recruiters, Recruiting Recruiters, uh, which is basically if you're a talent acquisition professional looking for employment, this is where you go. Uh, we launched another platform called Jobs for Lebanon, uh, another one, uh, Recruiters for Good in the Netherlands. So we launched a number of, of initiatives or help or supported, gave away our technology so that recruiters who were, uh, who were being followed were either getting help or could actually mentor candidates who were looking for help. You mentioned that you are still hiring. Uh, how do you onboard new employees, especially entry level, who may perhaps have never had a real job outside of college before? Um, that must be somewhat of a challenge. Yeah, onboarding is challenging and you just need to double down on, on helping people, giving them a, a sense of belonging. Um, so we actually really uh, uh, here as well invested in um, in what you get when you are onboarded. So you get your onboarding pack. There's some goodies in there. You get something named. Uh, you actually get some office equipment for you. And then you have more meets and greets with the teams. Uh, we do daily stand-ups with all the new hires. So we've, we've revised our onboarding. Um, and we've actually received really good, uh, good feedback on, on those adjustments and how we are onboarding people. Um, and I think it's become more, uh, more the norm uh, for people to work remotely. And therefore, uh, uh, when we haven't seen a, a, any slip in productivity or anything like that. Um, so there's really a, no issue with the professional aspect of it. And that's where I think the most important is the social uh, empathy um, uh, and leading with empathy. That's really, really important here. I've heard that your company is going to go virtual forever. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. We're going remote first. Um, and remote first means we've removed the need or the requirement for an employee to be in the office every day. And we're going to look at the office as a place to collaborate or and to socialize. It's a place where you can choose to go uh, if you want to be with colleagues, if you have a meeting, if you want to create, if you want a whiteboard, if for a, all the good reasons. But it's not a place where you have to go. So I can control that you arrived at eight and you left at five p.m. That that requirement is gone, right? Right. Um, and that is that is important. Uh, and I think, to be honest, the world is going to be remote first, whether companies like it or not, whether they know it or not. I was on a conference the other day, asked that question, like, what would you advise someone who is considering to maybe go remote or not as an organization? I said, I got I got news for you. You are already remote. Right, because right. when when the when the travel ban and so on uh, relieved, like how many, what what percentage of your employees are you going to get back in the office? Right now they are all out, so you're going to get what fifty percent back. Maybe if you really force it, you're going to get eighty percent back. What do you do with the twenty percent? You're going to fire them, or you're going to accept that they work from home? And if you accept that they work from home, you're going to make sure that they are productive, which means you're going to make sure that remote employees are productive, which means you actually need to be remote first. And so the other 80% who can now be productive from home are not going to come to the, you're already remote. I don't think we're going to see a way back to that. It just absolutely change the nature of, uh, of office usage. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, to follow up on that, Jerome, what will Smart Recruiter San Francisco headquarters look like one year from now? It will look like a, uh, a large, uh, uh, let's say, social space uh, where people come and, uh, and spend time together with uh, meeting rooms, um, solid hot desking capabilities. It will look like a co-working environment for Spartans. Sort of, um, sort of like a WeWork not, office space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whether I don't know that we would go to a WeWork, we probably want to keep some some form of presence, but maybe, but just more of a place to be together 
as opposed to, uh, you know, you have a picture of your kids on your desk and this is where you sit and you have your drawers and everything. I think that's going away. If some members of your San Francisco team decide to move to, say, uh, Utah or Montana, will you adjust their compensation to reflect a, a much lower cost of living? Of course we will. Uh, right. Or we should increase the salary of all the guys who work in Utah today, because otherwise it's really unfair. Right. Right. So uh, the way we do it, actually, is we have a, a, a base salary uh, for across the U.S. And then you actually get a cost of living bonus that depends on where you live. So you actually know what part of your salary is dependent on on where you live. And if you move from an expensive area to a cheaper area, then your cost of living allocation uh, uh, diminishes uh, or increasing increases if you're moving in the other direction, right? Do you have any guidance regarding this? Or do you care where your employees are located? No, I don't care. Okay. Uh, I don't care, actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I... I do care financially uh, in some way, but uh, it's marginal. Uh, and I think what's important is that people have a great uh, working and living environment, that they live in communities where they can make a difference, where they feel good, where their families feel good. And if that's Utah, or if it's San Francisco, or if it's, I don't know, like Jack Dorsey at Twitter, I think CEO of Twitter said he's moving to Kenya. <laughs> Well, why not, right? Why not? Why yeah. not? Why not, right? So if the CEO of Twitter can be uh, running Twitter from Kenya, why would engineers not move to Brazil or to, you know, Utah? So I think we're going to see also a good spread uh, of uh, uh, of uh, uh, wealth and opportunity across um, states and countries. You, you listen to the news reports and you get a sense uh, I'm in Connecticut, and you get a sense that people are just bailing out of San Francisco left and right. Um, and you hear that people have left New York City in droves. What has been your personal experience with your staff? I think that the moment you remove the need to be in the office from 8 to 5 or 9 to 5, um, you actually give people a license or a free pass to optimize their life. And maybe that you know, two bedroom apartment in San Francisco that you're sharing with a friend and you're paying $6,000 a month for isn't the best standard of living that you were thinking for yourself in the first place, right? And right. so uh, uh, I think here we, we should really let people adjust. I want to share with you uh, an excerpt from our uh, 2017 podcast interview. Uh, this is what you said. Smart recruiters is really built as the generational successor in the applicant tracking system to the first generation of the applicant tracking system. We are integrated talent acquisition suite. So think CRM plus marketing plus ATS in one modern platform that is fully mobile enabled, that people love using, highly collaborative, and it's got a built-in marketplace. And I, I still remember being in your booth in San Francisco and how excited you were showing me on your smartphone how cool your application really was. So uh, this was three years ago. Bring us up to date on the advancement of your platform and its capabilities. We've continued to move at, uh, at high speed here. Uh, we do a new release of our platform every quarter. Um, and so a lot of innovation come to the platform. Um, we know we've, we've recently uh, uh, released the uh, uh, texting and WhatsApping native in the platform. Uh, we've released a, a new inbox that actually brings all of your text message emails into a, a Gmail-like inbox, which is recruiter absolutely love. Um, so we're, we're, we're basically constantly um, innovating with one thing in mind. Uh, which is we're the only uh, enterprise class talent acquisition suite that delivers hiring success. And we, we're the only one that delivers outcome. And I think the biggest uh, evolution here has been in the last three years is that we really partner with our customers to help them transform 
their recruiting practice, leverage technology for the outcome. The outcome is hiring success. Hiring success is the ability to hire amazing talent on demand. That's what the CEO wants. And when you are a TA leader, you're like, hmm, okay, how do I do that? Because now they just cut my budget and I have this and I have this old system and, and, and how do I transform? And so this is a journey. And we want, uh, we want uh, TA leaders uh, who are driving massive impact for the organization, right? Because last time I checked, the team with the best player wins, right? And uh, that is exactly why TA needs to be an area of investment, a sales and marketing function. Uh, like function rather than a cost center that's optimized, right? So I think the, the biggest change, and I, I wrote a book uh, actually uh, uh, on this called Hiring Success, which right. has been very, very popular. Uh, and, uh, uh, and us realizing that the technology is a mean to an end and helping customers achieve hiring success outcomes. Well, let's talk a little bit about Hiring Success, uh, which was published last year, uh, a really interesting book that talks a, a lot about the, uh, the demand for talent. Um, if you were sitting down to write that book today, Jerome, what would you change, if anything? Um, I wouldn't really change anything, um, to be honest. I've been, uh, uh, I released it, what is that? I wrote it last summer, last summer, fall, so it's been a year. Uh -huh. Of course, uh, the market cha dynamics change, but the core principle of who you hire defines everything and you should measure your, your hiring in velocity and in quality, not in time to fill and cost per hire, which is like faster, cheaper. Um, that doesn't change. The candidate experience principle, like the core pillars of hiring success, candidate experience, manager engagement, recruiter productivity, that doesn't change. Um, I might double click on the, on the diversity uh, part of it. I have a chapter on diversity hiring in, in the book um, that I think uh, is light in, uh, um, in regards to the topic. It should be a book itself. Maybe the next book will be about diversity hiring. Well, well let's talk about the elephant in the uh, corporate boardroom, shall we? Uh, your recently published article in LinkedIn titled The 10 Principles of Diversity Hiring, which was published on October 14th of this year. This article has your byline, and I'm quoting, smart recruiters recently announced our plan to be an anti-racist force in the recruiting market. Today, I'm sharing the next step in this journey to drive anti-racist and overall diverse hiring practices. So let's face it, Jerome, most most companies, especially large publicly traded companies, talk a really good game around diversity, uh, but that's generally what it is. And um, I would encourage my viewers to check out my recent conversation with Jackie Clayton on YouTube. So, so what motivated or inspired you to go all in on diversity hiring? Was it, uh, you know, the germ that started with your book? I think um, it's a journey that started a long time ago for me. Um, and historically, uh, Smart Recruiters has, uh, has always been uh, doing what's right uh, in helping customers achieve better diversity outcomes. If you've been to our conferences, we had lots of uh, uh, diversity and inclusion uh, practices. We launched the reverse recruiting movement, which is helping underprivileged, underrepresented candidates find job and find mentors in our customers. Like we've done a lot of things, um, but I realized uh, in June, in the midst of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement that eh, we were still a, a passive uh, actor in this, uh, in this fight. And I think the, the decision to publish and to move forward was becoming an anti-racist, anti-discrimination force in the market. And I mean force means we chose our side. Like we're, we, and this is the one thing that did change, right? This is, there's not such thing as non-racist. Uh, if you take talk about racism or not privilege, if you talk about other forms of uh, discrimination, you're either anti-racist or you enjoy the system and that means that makes you a racist like understanding that and saying you've got to pick your camp here 
uh, we've picked our camp and we are anti-racist, anti-discrimination and, and that that plan and the, the diversity hiring uh, best practices that we published is, is the beginning. You know, this is really a remarkable, uh, very detailed document that outlines very specific goals. And I, I will put a link in the show notes um, to this. And, and I'd like to have you on expand uh, a, a few of the the bullet points here. Um, you talk about a, a diverse hiring team. Uh, tell us about that and how that is playing out at at your company, at Smart Recruiters. So we looked at the 10, what, what makes great uh, diversity uh, hiring? Like what are the, the core uh, best practices, principles of diversity? I interviewed dozens of uh, TA leaders, customers, diversity officers, everybody had ideas. I couldn't find someone said, oh, you want to achieve good diversity hiring outcomes? Of course, these are the 10 things you need to do. Like nobody was really that clear. So it's all right. Why don't we try and collect ideas and publish something simple that could actually uh, uh, be used as, as a basis uh, for TA leaders to drive more diversity outcomes. And what we published now on LinkedIn is a draft uh, that is up for discussion. So we're asking people to read it and what we have think tank with our customers, like, is there anything missing? Anything you disagree with? And is that achievable? Hint, would you actually be prepared to sign up to do this? Like take the pledge. And like, this is how we actually want to drive change, right? So this starts with diverse hiring team. Like a very simple tactic uh, here is uh, to ensure that underrepresented group uh, in your company are properly represented within the hiring team, within the recruiting recruiters, like TA leaders, TA teams, and within the hiring team, as in hiring managers, interviewers, and everything, right? So already there, making sure that uh, you have a diverse hiring team is, is such a simple move. Uh, and if you do that, you're already going to influence a lot of the outcomes. And the concept here of diverse hiring, you're not just talking about underrepresented people in terms of color and race and ethnic background, but you're also talking about um, people with special needs and disabilities. And every candidate you write in, in a bullet point called inclusive hiring process, every candidate is equally treated and feels equally comfortable. Um, that's, that, that requires, again, it's, it's, this is work. I mean, it's not like you just uh, one day go, oh, yeah, this is cool. Let's do this. I, I imagine you and your leadership team have put a hell of a lot of thought and time and effort into driving this initiative within your organization. Yes. Yeah. And we have. Um, and uh, uh, here we are, we're talking about uh, doing this ourselves, obviously being a role model ourselves, but more importantly, maybe uh, helping our customers move the needle on this, right? So right. these principles of diversity are here for the purpose that we want to actually ask our customers to take a pledge that they're going to do that. And if they do, then we will basically have companies that value diversity in the, in our system, we can actually help them as well. And now we're talking, we're not talking about the 300 recruiter, the 300 uh, employees of smart recruiters. We're talking about the hundreds or it's actually the millions of employees uh, of our customers, right? Because if you span uh, uh, the thousands of enterprises who use smart recruiters today, you have companies like LinkedIn, Twitter, Visa, Bosch, Ikea, like, big, big organizations, if those organizations look at this document and say, you know what? Yeah, it is going to take work, but we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get on that journey. Uh, that's how we become a force. That's how we drive change. So yes, it's work, uh, but it's not philanthropic work. Uh, it's actually work for the profit of the company because diverse organizations perform better than non-diverse organizations. Plain and simple, they just perform better. Absolutely. So it drives diversity, get more profits. Yeah, you know, and it really surprises me, Jerome, because this has been reported. You know, I've covered this space for 15 years. And 15 years ago, people were saying, you know, 
uh, organizations that have women in the boardroom perform better, uh, make more money. And still you see such a lack of um, that actually happening. And one of the bullet points in in this manifesto of yours is that you have uh, stated that you are going to have diverse a diverse uh, population within your board within the next two years. Yes. Yeah, it starts with the board, um, but it's, uh, uh, it doesn't stop there. Uh, and uh, we have a board that is a classic board of a startup technology company, which means investor number one gets a board member, investor number two gets a board member, investor right. number three gets a board member. Guess what? Investors don't have diversity. So I got all white males or uh, almost all white males in the board, right? So I know I need to drive diversity in the board. I just don't control who sits there. So it's a bit of a process, but I have committed to hire actually at least one diverse uh, member uh, of the board. But beyond that, uh, it's uh, it's in the your leadership team, uh, the leaders below them, and then the whole team uh, that you can actually drive that. And I think it's important for organizations to have clear representation objectives and to hold their executives accountable, right? Mm -hmm. Your sales guy, your sales manager hires 10 white males and that's, that's his team. This person should be fired. Right. right. This person should be fired because why? Because they are discriminating. Yeah, maybe that's not a cause to be fired, but just because they're a bad leader, because they just don't understand that if they had a better representation and more diversity on their team, they'd perform better. So I don't want that leader in my company. We have to hold our executives accountable for diversity. If they don't understand the benefit of diversity, uh, then it's not good. Yeah. So have you hired a chief diversity officer at this point? We have. Yeah, this was one of the points that we're going to hire one. Right. And uh, she actually starts in two weeks and she's amazing, like literally amazing. I'm so excited to have on board, like, like a blessing. Um, actually, it's, there's a funny story there, uh, which I'll tell you is that I normally never give feedback to candidates after an interview. So she asked me, so what do you see as next steps? And normally I say, well, let me think about it. I'll get back to you. Right. Uh, and there I said, uh, uh, I found myself saying, well, yeah, we, we should talk again. And how about we talk again next week? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to talk again next week. And then actually I rephrased myself and I said, you know, you know what? It would be an honor to talk to you again next week, right? And that's, uh, that's how, wow. how much we connected during the interview. I never do this. Um, so if she uh, listens, she'll recognize herself there. Uh, but yeah, very excited to have um, uh, our chief diversity on board to, of course, drive uh, behaviors inside smart recruiters, but most importantly, to ensure that companies who use smart recruiters achieve better diversity outcome than others. That's it. We just want to give our customers a competitive advantage by helping them achieve better diversity outcomes. And she will re be reporting directly to you. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another uh, benchmark that you have publicly stated is that you are committed to triple the proportion of your workforce being black, indigenous, and people of color over two years. That means roughly 30% of new hires. Um, I'm wondering, Jerome, if the fact that, you know, you're, you're sort of shifting to a virtual workforce, does that make it easier for you to bring in uh, this kind of, you know, this kind of diverse workforce? Because uh, I would imagine if you were just looking in San Francisco, that might be somewhat of a challenge. Yeah, it, it definitely makes it easier. I mean, for all I know, our next superstar data scientist might be a, might be a single mom at home in Brazil. Right. Like, why would I care? Um, so, yes, the remote hire, uh, hiring allows us to tap in a much wider talent pool, uh, much, much wider. And that makes it easier. Um, we are, uh, of course, as an organization that believes in great hiring, we're extremely picky. Uh, we invest a lot in hiring uh, and ensuring that we have the very best talent working for us. Um, but we are uh, following this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, guideline or this commitment 
to bring in more diverse talent. And actually, so far, so far, so good. Uh, we've we found amazing talent. It's incredible when you start looking how much talent is out there that you normally say, oh, it's so hard to find a black person to be an engineer. Well, it turns out it's not, right? You just gotta, <laughs> yeah. you just got to look. You got to look in the right place, right? Yeah, of course. Um, through this crazy last eight months, nine months through the pandemic, what has inspired you? What, in, what inspires me is, um, is the world that emerges on the other side. What inspires me is uh, the connective social tissue that we're seeing emerge um, uh, through this pandemic. Uh, what inspires me is the empathy uh, with which people are interacting uh, I think we're building a much, much better world out of this. Um, and yes, it's it's a very tense and very difficult moment, but it's also a big moment of hope for what is the world we want to live in uh, going forward. And I, I think that uh, the spread of digital wealth um, around the world, uh, around the country and around the world is a massive, massive benefit for the world. I think we're going to, you know, if San Francisco is not anymore the only place where you can create a big startup and you can do this anywhere, what does that do to Detroit? What does that do to, you know, someplace in Alabama? What does that do to Utah? What does that do to Kenya? If Jack Dorsey really does go to Kenya and lives there, like, what does that do? What does that do to the country, right? So we're actually building the the wealth has been consolidated into a happy few uh, for way too long. And I think this is an opportunity to actually distribute a lot more opportunities and a lot more wealth around the world. So I'm actually very hopeful for what comes next. That's great. Um, just a, a couple more questions for you. A as you know, a lot of recruiters, TA leaders, HR managers, and others in our space have lost their jobs over the last few months, what advice can you offer them? One, uh, besides all the standard advice that they would themselves offer to friends who are job seekers is uh, actually pay it forward uh, and uh, use your time to uh, reverse recruit and start mentoring people who are looking forward. Help review resumes, help mock interviews, help, you know, and just get yourself some good karma, keep yourself busy, uh, uh, but get good karma and pay it forward. Um, and second, upskill yourself. Uh, the world of recruiting is changing very fast. Um, and it's an increasingly more digital world. It's a world uh, where skills are different, new skills, whether it's marketing skills or sourcing skills or interviewing. Like There's a lot of new jobs happening in TA. Upskill yourself. Go to a uh, go to take the hiring success masterclass, uh, take a certification class. And I'm just naming the, the ones that smart recruiters put available, but there's hundreds of things you can do. So upskill yourself, pay it forward, and then be a diligent uh, job hunter. You know what that means, uh, like be organized. Uh, and, uh, uh, and it is a pipeline and you are looking at probably 200 job application before you land a job. Um, so this is not a sprint, it's a marathon and just run it as a marathon with positivity and with a good sequence and a rejection is not a take on your own personal value, it's just the market and that's it. And you just go and, and move on and move to your next one until you find exactly the one you're looking for. That's really great advice. Well, Jerome, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today. It's it's really been a pleasure to see you. and. Uh, to have this conversation. And uh, I, you know, I, I'm just so impressed with what Smart Recruiters is doing, not just as a business, but as a, a, a force for social good. Yeah. And as, a, as a, an example that can be put forth for other companies to look at and see, this is a very successful company and, and they have a conscience. And they are doing really good things. And like, uh, I think your slogan is, you are who you hire, right? Yes. Yes, you are who you hire, 100%. Absolutely. You are who you hire. Who you hire defines everything. So thank you for having me today, Peter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, it's Peter Clayton. Please hang on for just a minute. 
Like most of you, my business was completely upended by COVID-19. Instead of filming marketing, sales, testimonial, and product demo videos at conferences and corporate offices, I'm living on Zoom. Zoom can be an effective video tool for many kinds of powerful content. As people have become more comfortable being on camera and upgrading their video streaming capabilities, we are now able to create high quality, entertaining, and informative videos using the Zoom platform. Virtual meetings, customer testimonials, product demos, marketing pitches. You'll be amazed at the video quality and the amount of sophistication and graphic complexity we're able to create. For a free consultation on how you can use video to market and promote your business, send me an email, peter at totalpicture.com, and check out totalpicture.com forward slash work. I look forward to hearing from you, and thanks for tuning in.